Okay. Only the first half of this will be recorded. Um, but Malvika, since you are here, are um, you ready to do the talk? <laughs> I am very much ready to do the talk. Uh, I'm, all, I'm actually going to take this opportunity to acknowledge that this morning a team of OLS facilitators delivered three hours workshop for Software Sustainability Institute, which went really well. Uh, and you had been supporting them. There were quite a few team members from Festus, so congratulations to them. And I'm here to talk about personal ecology and self-care. Often in open science or in general, any, any work where you are investing a lot of your personal and emotional energy, there is a requirement to acknowledge that, there, that we need to worry about two things. One is personal ecology and self-care. I suppose a lot of you have already heard about self-care, um, but here's a quick reminder. Self-care is what we do to take care of ourselves so we can contribute to the work that inspires and fulfills us. So on a day-to-day -day basis, there might be quite a lot of things that you do that makes you feel like there's a lot that I'm giving away, but you also need to make spaces for things that inspires you and, and makes your energy uh, sustainable for, in the long term. And that really brings me to the point of personal ecology. This is what we do to maintain balance, spacing, efficiency, to sustain our energy over a prolonged time. So self-care is something that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, but personal ecology is how you integrate that into your life so you can have that uh, inspiration for a prolonged period of time. So it's a part of a broader ecosystem. Uh, this is something that I learned about in Mozilla Open Leadership in 2018. And this concept really spoke to me because uh, of course I love working and it just always felt like if I need to make space for self-care, I'm actually sacrificing a part of my uh, you know, work for something that is not integral. But this was a huge reminder for me that if I continue to work the way that I was working, it can lead to burn, burnout. And I was actually experiencing burnout. And if we are building a community, we cannot build a healthy community if we are individually burned out. So burned out is, uh, burnout is characterized in the occupational context by feeling of energy depletion or exhaustion, increased mental distance or feeling of negativism related to job, reduced professional efficacy because we're always stressed. Once we are experiencing burnout at work, it actually have broad personal consequences if not addressed. And personal in terms of these occupational uh, burden that starts to seep into our personal life, uh, which is why we are also giving you a reminder of that if you are experiencing burnout, maybe stop for a second and reevaluate um, what is causing you this energy depletion or feeling of negativism and how can we actually address that. Personal, so we would actually give you a framework for personal ecology plan for yourself and your community. Um, this needs to be proactive, strategic, systemic, and systematic, meaning that it's just not that you decide today that I'm going to take care of myself and don't really act on it, but you need to actually make it a project that, that actually allows you to create an intentional space into your life. So... What we want to do is to identify most fulfilling conditions under which you thrive and sustain them. Also identify least fulfilling conditions that frustrate you and avoid them. So here is one thing that we would do in the ether part, which is reflection of two minutes, um, which is about finding word pairs. Uh, for example, two word, which allows you to think about most fulfilling days. In my case, it's about when I have really empowering exchanges, it could be something small, um, conversation I would have with my team or a conversation I would have with my partner or anything. Productive collaboration. So, you know, working with people who actually makes you feel productive and not always that you're talking about the same thing over and over and nothing happens. And finally, mission alignment. So when I deeply care about certain aspects of, of my work and I, if I work with people who have same alignment, it really makes me feel energized. But you can also think about word pair, which actually describe your most unfulfilling um, situation, like unclear expectation. When I work on project, when the goals are not defined, that really frustrates me. When I have meeting after me meeting, but I don't have any actual contribution to make, that really frustrates me. And destructive comment, if I'm having a good day and someone just 
say something which really puts me in a bad uh, mood. So you can have different kind of uh, things that describes your different feelings for you. Um, so I would give you two minutes time. I'll stop sharing and in the etherpad, I would invite you to take some time to think about what these word pairs look like to you. And that would be in the line number 67 and 75. for sharing great so thank you for sharing your two word pairs for fulfilling and unfulfilling day and again you know these are for you meaning that i would like you to think about more deeply what these means and if possible please do think about how can you communicate those with your colleagues or your friends or your partner or anyone who you would like to have a good situation with or who can actually support you to build a better work environment Okay, so when we are thinking about personal ecology, you need to be strategic. And this is something we've already started with identifying what really makes us inspired. And also it starts by ensuring that you are taking care of your well-being and availability for yourself. And once you've done that, it's much easier to make your availability for others you care for and the work that inspires you. Well, I said the same. So you have to make space for others, which requires you to understand how what is occupying time in my day that could be actually uh, channeled out in, in a way that is fulfilling and useful. So we talked about already, you know, these word pair, but there are a lot more different frameworks and toolkits you can use. And I have uh, we have provided the handout for prompts and question for self-assessment of our personal ecology habit and drawing inspiration to create personal plan. This is a huge one. And I, I think if you can take out two hours of your life to sit down with it and plan it, it would be in long term quite helpful. Um, and in a way, think about it as a responsibility for leading a project or leading a community that this is your responsibility that you identify what is useful for you how can you actually make your life uh, as a community leader or project leader better so you can build a better space for members of your community so what this toolkit would have is work-life quadrant snapshot so first one would be this word pair identify more than three right now we've asked you for three but identify as much as possible then you think about work-life quadrant where you want to discover how to bring your whole self to work in a way that empowers you while maintaining boundaries between work and home to avoid the burnout so in that quadrant you would be thinking about things at work i want to keep at work so for example i would like to keep my slack from workspace at work i don't want that to be triggered while i'm um, doing my personal work. Things at work that I want to bring into my life. So if I am building a, a good plan for my day for work and I'm not planning that kind of things for my life, I want to actually bring that behavior of planning something into my life. Things in my life I want to keep outside my work. So that could be, you know, my holidays. I do not want that to seep into my work and things in my life I want to bring into my work. So think about, you know, there are it, it, there is really no work-life balance. You have to think about how do you actually maintain if there are certain boundaries where you can clearly define that this is something I love from my work that I want to actually bring into my life and vice versa. In this particular snapshot, you are also thinking about responses that show you about your work-life balance. Where do you see opportunities to bring things into your life from work and vice versa? And how might you set the boundary around things you don't want to bring back and forth? So if I am going to develop something like this or you is going to develop something like this, it would be really useful if we can communicate the, that with each other. And that would help us actually build a better team because we would be aware of each other uh, situations and we would we would like to support that. So for example, if you goes on a holiday, uh, she would let us know, please do not ping me on Slack or please stay away. I mean, honestly, we would not want to do that, but I think it just helps. It just also helps you to take control of uh, what is this boundary? Look, what does this boundary look like for me? The third one you would look about is delights and distractions of that snap snapshot. So you would have uh, create a delightful, engaging, remote or distributed workspace. So right now we're working from home most of the time. Sometimes we are at work. Uh, when you're at home, there's like some, you know, 
things that you would look at if you're working in the kitchen counter, some clutter in your house that would actually distract you or, you know, there are some things that brings you joy at the moment that you're working. You can think about that. Uh, you can try to plan that a bit more. Sometimes uh, for me during lunchtime, I could uh, watch a 15 minute TED talk on a topic that I really like and it really energizes me for the rest of the day. And distractions are when I have quite a lot of house chore that is left from the weekend and I haven't finished them and I have a new project to start, but I would rather clean the things because it's much easy to do. So you would have to also think about, you know, what, what does, what triggers you in both the directions. And then similar to compare and contrast exercises that you've been doing in the earlier weeks, you can also think about that in your work. So com compare the current state of your personal ecology with its contrast, your desired state. So you know what to work towards to improve your self-care plan. Um, so if you can think about what this you know, work-life quadrant looks like, you would also need to bring out, how would you know? What is the indicator that you've actually achieved it? How do you want your work-life balance to be would also come with what would you have, what would you need to change to be this way? So I want to close with that uh, three points, which is about, you know, anything you would like to share um, in terms of self-care tips with the OLS community, but also your own personal communities and project, uh, please do share because we, we don't need to stigmatize self-care or mental health um, like probably in five years ago. We need to talk about it. We need to talk about it specifically in open science. We all experience overwork because a lot of you are working on open science project in the side of your already day job. So you need to acknowledge that, uh, that we need to take care of ourselves and that there are things that we need to do. You also want to think about immediate next step you can take to sustain yourself, your personal ecology or work-life balance. So if nobody has reminded you at your work that this is fifth month of this year, half a year has already gone and that there were a lot of things that you've been doing, maybe this is a time for you to pause and think about, am I doing all right? Uh, is, is there anything I would like to change for the rest of the six months? and identify your accountability buddy. So of course, you know, nobody is asking me to uh, be honest about how much I'm taking care of myself, but if I have an accountability buddy, a colleague or a friend who I can say that, you know, I'm trying this new thing, I would like you to check with me or support me in uh, taking the next step. So with that, I'll stop and again, stop recording and open the floor for,